Well, good afternoon. The National Assembly for Wales is now in session. And on behalf of the National Assembly for Wales, I want to express our heartfelt sympathies to the families and friends of those who have lost their lives or have been injured in the recent terrorist atrocities in Tunisia. And I have accepted an urgent question on this matter under Standing Order 12.66, and I call on Andrew R.T. Davis to ask the question. Andrew R.T. Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Following the initial comments made by the First Minister on the tragic events in Tunisia, will he make a full statement on his current understanding of the situation? Yes, Presiding Officer. The facts, of course, have been widely reported. On the 26th of June, a radicalised university student armed with a Kalashnikov killed innocent tourists on the beach at Port El Kantoy in Tunisia. He continued his attack into the Imperial Marhaba Hotel and onto the streets where he was shot dead by Tunisian police. It's believed that he was a lone gunman and part of an ISIL-inspired network, but Tunisian security forces are investigating whether he had the support from possible accomplices. Trudy Jones, who was 51 years old and from Blackwood, was on holiday with friends, and she is thought to have been on the beach in Seuss when a gunman began firing on Friday and she was killed. Other Welsh people were injured or caught up in the terrorist attacks, and further details are still emerging. It is unknown at this stage whether there are any further Welsh casualties or fatalities. So with at least 18 British nationals have been killed, and the number is likely to rise to around 30 as further identifications are completed. I can say that the Foreign and Commonwealth Office are leading the UK government response to events in Tunisia with logistical support from the Ministry of Defence. My officials have been in contact with the FCO throughout the weekend and, of course, remain in contact. I'm sure, however, I speak for all members in this chamber when I say that our thoughts are very much with the families of those who are suffering so much at the moment. Thank you. Andrew Archie Davis. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you, First Minister, for that uh, detailed statement on your understanding of the horrors uh, that unfolded uh, in Tunisia. And in particular, uh, we on this side of the chamber offer our condolences to the family of Trudy Jones, uh, who undoubtedly left on what was to be a very happy holiday and obviously uh, is not to return. Uh, and our deepest sympathies go to her family and friends at this very troubling time. Also acknowledging the heroics of many people as well, such as Matthew James, who acted as a human shield, uh, protecting his fiance and other members of his family. Uh, we can truly identify with such heroics in the face of such evil. Um, but ultimately, uh, what we saw last Friday, regrettably, uh, will not be the last incident of its kind unless we unite and face down such terrible terror events wherever they occur in the world. I would like to ask two questions, if I may, of you, First Minister. Uh, the first question is, how is the Welsh Government working with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office to support uh, Welsh casualties, Welsh survivors, and also at returning tourists uh, from the resort who witnessed uh, such horrors and atrocities uh, that would be, wouldn't be out of place in a war zone, uh, so that the support that maybe some of the sponsored bodies that the Welsh Government support here in Wales, such as the Health Service uh, and in particular social services, uh, can, if they are required, offer that support uh, for people who witness such a traumatic event, and obviously some people will be obviously carrying injuries from that event. And what, given the discussions uh, that his officials have had with the government in Westminster, who lead on many of these issues, does he expect over the coming days uh, regarding announcements uh, for the repatriation uh, of people back from the resorts uh, and ultimately uh, any other news that we might expect on casualties um, with over another 12 at least uh, bodies to identify uh, that could be from Britain? <laughs> Yes, at this moment in time, not all bodies have been identified. I can inform members that I do receive the daily situation report from the uh, FCO and from the wider uh, UK government departments and uh, embassy and consular staff who are uh, involved. It's clear that there will be more confirmed fatalities. 
At the moment, uh, the identification process is still ongoing. I know that there are many UK embassy and consular staff on the ground who are at this moment in time working closely with other UK departments and agencies to ensure that people can come home. And I know the Ministry of Defence has been involved in that process. Uh, at this moment in time, the objective is to identify those who have been killed, to return those who have been injured uh, back to the UK, uh, and then, of course, to deal uh, with the injuries that people have suffered as a result of the events there. I think it's also worth noting that we understand that there will be a need to provide people with emotional support. There are many people who witnessed the events that occurred uh, in Tunisia, uh, and they will, of course, have to come to terms with what, with what they observed and witnessed when they were there. The Welsh NHS, of course, will stand ready to support uh, all those people who need uh, counselling perhaps in the future and any help with any physical injuries as members would expect. But at this moment in time, uh, the information that we have is that the effort is going in and this of course is what we would expect inevitably to identifying uh, the bodies that remain in order that families may be properly informed and of course to ensure that people are returned home as quickly as possible. Leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. Dear Llywydd, and I thank the First Minister for his statement, and I would like to echo the sentiments that have already been expressed here this afternoon. The attack upon holidaymakers in Tunisia last week were deplorable and reflected a heinous disregard for human life. On behalf of Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, I want to express my condolences to the families of those who were murdered and injured. And our thoughts go out to all people, wherever they live in the world, who have to live with the daily terror of violence. There is too much of it in too many places in the world, and this attack has brought it close to home. And we too pay tribute to Trudy Jones and Matthew James. Those lucky enough to return home have been left injured and traumatised, and the families of those killed have been left heartbroken. At times of such repulsive actions, humanity can be shown at its very worst. It can also show its best, and it's been reported that local people created a human shield around the resource, resort in an attempt to protect those inside. And there have been further stories of care, compassion and bravery. At a time of such tragedy, we can also see that people demonstrated the very best of humanity. And it is in that spirit that we can and we must overcome the forces of hatred in all of its forms and of perpetual conflict. And I'm sure that all of us here and the First Minister would agree. Yes, it, it's difficult, of course, to try to understand the mindset of the person who carried out these attacks. What we can say with firm certainty is this, that the views of the gunmen are not shared by the vast majority of the people of Tunisia. The views of the gunmen are not shared by the vast majority of Muslims. And we all saw film footage of local people trying to help we all saw film footage of local people providing support to those who had been affected, and I thank the people of Tunisia for the support that they have uh, provided. We know that this wasn't an isolated incident. There were other incidents across uh, other parts of the world. We saw what happened in Kuwait. We saw what happened but for very different reasons in Carolina as well. Tunisia is a country that has made a good transition from being effectively uh, a country that was unfree to an open democracy. It's for that reason, I believe, that the country is particularly targeted by those who abhor democracy and those who wish to claim that democracy is alien <coughs> to their own particular interpretation of religious tradition. But the people of Tunisia, just as the people of Wales and the UK uh, share with them want to see uh, freedom, they want to see prosperity, and they wish to welcome visitors to their country safely. And they will, I have no doubt, abhor the attacks that occurred in their own country 
and their actions show how abhorrent these attacks were to them. Leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Could I uh, thank the First Minister for his uh, statement and answers to questions this afternoon? Uh, the events of last Friday in the beautiful country of Tunisia are truly shocking to all of us and an affront to all right-thinking people of all faiths and none. Uh, I would like to offer, on behalf of the Welsh Liberal Democrat Group, our sincere condolences <coughs> to the family and loved ones of Trudy Jones and indeed to the whole community of Blackwood, who I know have been completely shocked uh, by the events. Uh, the manager of the care home uh, where she worked, transforming the lives of people, uh, spoke very movingly of her record uh, of service, but also spoke of the need to support one another. And would the First Minister uh, recognise that for those people returning, or those people touched in any way by this tragedy, tragedy will need support from services that are under the control of Welsh Government and commit to making sure that those are made available. As was said by uh, Leanne Wood, there have been incredible tales of bravery emerging from Tunisia, whether that be hotel staff uh, forming a human shield to protect tourists, or indeed Matthew James, who uh, threw himself in front of the attacker to save his loved one. I understand that Mr James is now back home and is safe and in a stable condition at UHW here in Cardiff and I'm sure uh, we would all want to wish him well for a speedy recovery. Uh, First Minister, I know that uh, a number of other tourists uh, with serious injuries have been evacuated but I understand Mr James is the only Welsh, tourist, Welsh citizen in that position. Uh, but uh, what discussions have you had, if any, with the tourist companies, tourism companies, who have people uh, continuing to be in those resources that may be having difficulty in evacuating them? And what can Welsh Government do to support any efforts to evacuate people who, need to, who want to leave uh, Tunisia as quickly as possible? And what ongoing discussions are you having with the Foreign Office about advice to Welsh holidaymakers who may, be, uh, who may be now frightened about plans that they have made for trips uh, later on this summer? I, I'm aware that uh, at least one holiday company is offering refunds uh, to uh, holiday makers who have booked holidays in Tunisia. Uh, the advice I would give to people who are considering whether or not to go on holiday to Tunisia is to follow the FCO advice. That's important. It's not for me to give them advice. It's important that the FCO is able to do that, being, of course, the organisation that has people on the ground. In time, of course, it's actually hugely important that people do go to Tunisia because if the Tunisian economy suffers greatly because of a lack of tourists, that can only fuel the ideology that caused this atrocity in the first place, although people are going to be nervous as individuals, that much we accept. I am aware of the fact that uh, there is a significant operation that's being carried out by, uh, with the armed forces and with the FCO to airlift people home. At this moment in time, it's not clear whether any others from Wales will be identified as having been injured or killed. Uh, we're not in that position yet because not everybody has sadly been identified. But nevertheless, I am confident the UK government is doing all that it can in order to assist people uh, from all parts of the UK uh, who have been uh, affected by this incident. The leader of the Liberal Democrats is perfectly correct to ask what services should be made available to people to deal with the aftermath. In many ways, of course, the physical injuries that somebody has are easy to observe and treatment can be offered, but it's the psychological scars that are less easy to identify uh, and need, of course, to be uh, identified as early as possible and then uh, help given. There will be people, I have no doubt, who will require counselling after what they have witnessed. Uh, there will be people who will need extra help beyond that, possibly, in order to come to terms with what they've seen. We know, of course, that there are examples uh, in history where people have survived events like this and then become immersed in a type of guilt. Why me? Why am I somebody who uh, survived? And that's something that's very difficult to predict. And, of course, it's important that people, if they feel that way, do seek uh, the assistance that they need in order to help uh, themselves. Uh, at this stage, it's very difficult to know how many people will be in that position, but we, of course, stand ready, as members would expect, to ensure that the Welsh NHS is there to help them. 
Uh, Gwyn Price. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to add my sincere condolences to those already expressed and to the family and friends of my constituent, Trudy Jones, who lived and worked in Blackwood. It is difficult to comprehend the sad and tragic circumstances. Trudy was a loving mother and a family lady who will be sadly missed. Trudy worked in Highfields Nursing Home in Blackwood and her manager described her as an absolute angel. So kind. Trudy would help anybody at any time. I do ask for the family to be granted privacy at this very sad time. I, I don't think I can go beyond the, uh, the words that the member for Isloin has, uh, has used. Uh, what struck me uh, in what he said was the description of uh, Trudy Jones as an absolute angel, uh, and that is something that has come clearly from those who are closer to her. Uh, I don't think I can add uh, anything to uh, what the member has said. I think he has uh, encapsulated um, Trudy Jones and what she meant to her community. Thank you. Uh, Mick uh, First Minister, um, the solidarity we see around this chamber is the sort of an indication of the sort of solidarity that is really needed throughout the world uh, as people unite to actually pose the evil of intolerance and terrorism, not just from this event, but unfortunately for potential future events. I would particularly like to welcome back to the UK Matthew James, who's already mentioned a constituent of mine from Tree Havard, who out of dark times and the most tragic and terrible times, uh, is also an indication of the extent within uh, our humanity that people can, show, can exhibit the most uh, uh, remarkable uh, and outstanding bravery. An individual who threw himself in front of the uh, gunfire, was shot three times, protecting the life of his uh, fiance. Uh, he is now um, uh, back in the UK. He is now receiving treatment, uh, is now very positive. Uh, and I wonder, First Minister, whether if you have time and opportunity to send your regards and wishes uh, to Matthew James. Yeah, I thank the member for his uh, comments. Uh, an outstanding act of instinctive bravery. I think it's the description that I would apply. Uh, I would very much like to send my best wishes to uh, Matthew now, of course, uh, and I hope to be able to uh, go further than that over the next uh, few days uh, in terms of uh, perhaps, if it's possible, being able to visit him as well, if that is convenient to him. I have no other speakers. But I'd like to thank the members for their very fitting tributes, and I think we should all appreciate the day and enjoy every day. We now move back to questions on the paper, and the questions to the First Minister, and first this afternoon, Ellen Jones. Beth yw blaen o'r eithau Llywodraeth Cymru ar gyfer hyrwyddo twristiaeth yn y Gorllewin? Yn y Gorllewin, wrth gwrs yn rhan hanfodol o uh, arlwy twristiaeth Cymru, Bydd yn gwaith marchnata ar draws pob cyfrwng pob amser yn rhoi sylw i'r hyn sydd gan dwristiaeth yn y gorllewin yw gynnig uh, yn hyd a phob rhan o Gymru. Prif wynidog, bydd uh, Castell Aberteifi bellach yn uh, adnodd uh, twristiaeth pwysig yn y uh, gorllewin. Uh, Dwi'n uh, diolch i chi am agor y Castell yn ffurfiol wrth noswethog. Beithio fo chi wedi mwynhau cael eich cadeirio yn fardd a cael y ddawns flodau wedi pherfformio i chi yng Castell Aberteifi. Um, ydych chi'n cytuno â fi felly fod y model sydd wedi hyrwyddo a datblygu Castell Aberteifi o gyrff um, ymddiroedoleithwyr lleol Cadwgan y Cyngor Sir a'r cyrff ariannu i gyd yn dod at ei gilydd i hyrwyddo prosiect trefnau fel prosiect economaidd a thwristiaeth fydd y bydd i'r ardal i'r dyfodol? Well, dwi ddim yn credu uh, bydd e'n cael y cyfle to eistau uh, uh, yng nghader uh, y bardd uh, heb uh, 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 y tro hyn. Uh, Gaid ddweud, wrth gwrs, oedd Castell Abertaifi um, mewn ffordd ddim yn rhan o dre am blynyddau mawr, achos y ffaith bod neb gallu mewn y Castell. Uh, oedd, uh, oedd na fenni, wrth gwrs, oedd yn bywne, oedd yn thacymeriad yn, yn y dre. Ac wrth gwrs yr ofan oedd, uh, unwaith na thi wrth gwrs i, I farw, a byddai'r castell hyn yn cwmpwrt i gilydd. Nid felly mi wedi bod, a gai dal i ta yn gynnwys to i, i'r cyrff sydd wedi bod uh, yn weithgar iawn, er mwyn sicrhau bod y castell nid dim ond ar agor i'r cachoedd unwaith to, o wedi cael ei wneud yn saff, yn ddiogel, ac, ac wrth gwrs uh, y tŷ, y difiwn y castell wedi gael ei ail agor unwaith to, o oedd y lle mewn cyflwr gwael pan wedi'r sydd tu a dwi'n mynedd yn ôl. So, na, uh, enghreffdau dros ben o beth sy'n gallu cael ei wneud pan mae bobl 
gweithgar yn y gymuned yn gweithio gyda Llywodraeth yn gallu cael ar enw peth hefyd yn hanfodol o bwysig i'r prosiect erlys wrth gwrs y gymuned leol. Paul Davis. Dio Llywydd, prif yn ei ddod yn ysgomer a traeth marloes yn beth o lethu. Yw'r unig cyrchfannau yng Nghymru sydd wedi wneud yr hester o'r deg lle gorau yn Ewrop ar gyfer gwyliau tiliol yn ôl Lonely Planet. Nawr, dwi'n siŵr byddwch chi yn cytuno fi bod hyn yn fath o gyd na byddiau sy'n amhrysiadwy mewn marchnata Sir Benfro yn rhyngwladol. Ac felly, allwch chi ddweud wrthon ni pa gam y penodol y mae Llywodraeth Cymru yn ei cymryd i fanteisio ar hyn ac i rwyddo llefydd fel yn ei sgomer. Well, we've already scored two with. On the other hand, it's here two in the North Scotia. On the Dailad, we're currently at new with the other other ones. At the moment, of course, Borden and Robert, but the Borden guys are definitely the upper one. Our other ones, of course, we're not seeing much of Ben. Get on this score, come heavy. Then Glen are by way of Adar, see the see the name. Of course, we're not seeing much of Ben. He's here, Ben Ro, and he's going with on Galad Young. Of course, get a. Y cwmni e twristiaeth yn yr ardal, er mwyn hybu twristiaeth yn siŵr Benfro. Er enghraif ddim yn rhy beth o'n ysgomer. Mae'r amgueddfa newydd wedi agor yn angl, yn aberdau gleddau fyna, wrth ar lan y gleddau. A hefyd wrth gwrs, mae yna ar un wedi cael ei rhoi i siambr masnach a thwristiaeth Aber Gwain ag Udig er mwyn wrth gwrs i hybu gogledd Sir Benfro fel rhywle i ymweld â. William Powell. Diolch, Llywydd. First Minister, picking up uh, the reference that, that you've just made, the potential for promoting tourism by attracting cruise ships to West Wales is, uh, is considerable. However, um, ensuring uh, a warm welcome and high-quality facilities are critical to developing the visitor experience. And in that context, it was Fishguard and Goodick Chamber of Trade and Tourism just recently that emphasised the importance of such infrastructure in developing that potential to the full. First Minister, recognising the importance of supporting communities that are improving uh, their destination management, uh, what can Welsh Government do to further promote investment in the area and also potentially to create a positive climate uh, for the devel uh, development of the long-awaited Fishguard Marina? Well, there are uh, six cruise ports in Wales. Two of them are in Pembrokeshire, at Milford and uh, Fishguard. And Fishguard has been identified, together with Holly Head, as the most suitable for the development of new facilities, given the depth of water and access to tourist attractions. In terms of the cruise business, I can say the long-term strategy for the cruise business in Wales is presently being undertaken, because we know that the present port facilities generally are not yet adequate for the ships that are... Uh, under, construction, under construction between now and uh, for the course of the next five years. Uh, so we are looking at how we can ensure that the great growth that we've seen in cruise business in Wales continues in the future and our port facilities are able to accommodate the new ships that are being built. Question two, Alan Fred Jones. Yeah, I'm life of Prewini Dog that's Ganyad are so take I cancel to what they Mae'n cael ein cyfleawni ar gyfer cancer yn dangos y camau yn un cymryd y maes gwasanaethau a chanliniadau cancer, ddo er enghraifft, coedd yn ei sut mae'r grŵp gweithredu cancer yn buddsoddi miliwn o bunnoedd yn achwanegol y flwyddyn i ail fodeli a gwella gwasanaethau cancer yn Cymru. Diolch yn barf. Fe fyddwch chi yn ymwybodol bryd mynd i dod o ymgyrch Mr. Irfan Williams o Fangor, hawl i ddiw, ac fe ddaeth newyddion da cadawol yn dilyn eu dwyniaeth yn Manceinion, yn ddiweddar yma. Ac mae Mr. Williams wedi ymddwyn yn gyda gyrddas yn ystod y cymnod anodd yma, ac mae newyddus iawn i gwrdd â chi i drafod sefyllfa cleifion tebyg iddo fo, a fyddwch chi'n barod i ymateb yn gadarnhaol i'r cais yma? Wel, dwi ddim yn gwybod eto beth bydde nod yn yw cyfarfod. Ac ewyd ar y dechrau, wi'n fatros ben i glywed. Bod pethau'n mynd yn dda i Mr. Mr. Williams, wrth gwrs. Mae'n cael ymateb anarferol iawn i'r cyffuriau merno, a mwna ddweud i groesawu. Mwna'n dongos rhywbeth am, am i'n gymeriad e hefyd, bydd yn ei gweud, o achos y ffaith bod yn ei wneud yn, yn dda. Gaid ddweud hefyd, bydd yn ein gweud wrth Mr. Williams, bod yna gais y fe nawr, yna gyfle fe nawr, yna cais enwaith eto i system yr IPF, a achos mae wedi dangos bod e'n eithriadol ynglyn ar um, y mateb, mae fe wedi cael uh, i'r, uh, i'r cyffuriau hyn. 
wedi gofyn uh, i'r uh, uh, canllawiaeth i gael ei uh, newid er mwyn sicrhau bod ein, bod ein uh, hollol clir lle ma bobl yn cael ymateb fel hyn bod yna gyfle i mae'r to i ofyn am gyllido trwy ddod IPFA. Mick Anthony. Uh, First Minister, one of the cancer legacies we suffer in Wales is uh, from our industrial heritage and exposure to asbestos, and this 4th of July uh, is action on mesothelioma day, which hits this country particularly hard, and of course there's an event in the Assembly tomorrow lunchtime to, uh, to promote this. Uh, will, first, will, will you make a statement on the Welsh Government's support for uh, the highlighting of the incidence of asbestos and action for mesothelioma day and people who live with this terrible condition in Wales? Of course, I understand the Deputy Minister for Health is due to attend the Senate event uh, tomorrow. We welcome, of course, the Charter that has been uh, drawn up by Mesothelioma uh, UK, uh, and we will, of course, continue to work to ensure enforcement agencies are protecting people from the dangers of asbestos, but we were, of course, saddened that the member's own uh, bill uh, was rejected by the Supreme Court. Altaf Hussein. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, your government's cancer strategy states that the Welsh population should have an excellent chance for surviving wherever they live in Wales. As with any plan, what matters is delivery. How will your government improve cancer survival rates if the practice of downgrading urgent referrals from GPs is allowed to continue, knowing that no two patients are alike, knowing that the generic referral system with ticking boxes and red flags cannot hold true for every patient, knowing that we cannot have a tailor-made patient. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I understood the question, but I mean, the, uh, if we look at our figures, we know that for 31-day uh, waits for treatment and 62-day waits for treatment, we are ahead of England. Uh, the reason for that is that GPs are being vigilant in referring people. The vast majority of people who are referred uh, to uh, specialist care who are suspected of having cancer happily don't turn out to have cancer, but it's absolutely right to say that our GPs have done an excellent job in referring people as quickly as possible. We see that in the statistics, and we expect to see that reflected in the, uh, the five-year survival statistics and beyond over the next few years. Julie Morgan. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, early detection is a very important par part of the cancer delivery plan. Um, is the First Minister aware that uh, Breast uh, Test Wales has the highest cancer, cancer detection rate of any screening service in the UK? And what does he think can be done to improve the uptake in the other screening services, such as cervical cancer and uh, bowel cancer? It's to do with publicity, of course, and making people aware of uh, the potential risks and also making it as easy as possible for people to access the tests. And Breast Test Wales is an excellent example of where that's been done with mobile units. Uh, with awareness being very high uh, amongst uh, women and we are seeing of course the benefits of that. The member is absolutely right to say that with, with every cancer uh, early detection is crucial. With some cancers early detection isn't possible but uh, breast cancer isn't one of those uh, and so early detection for that particular form of cancer is absolutely fundamental uh, to increasing someone's survival rate beyond five years in the future. We now move to questions from the party leaders, and first this afternoon, the leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. <coughs> first Minister, the person who has been tipped to be your next party leader has said that Wales was underfunded when he was your party's chief secretary to the Treasury. He said that he maintained the government line and didn't speak out. First Minister, how would you describe someone who says something publicly knowing it to be untrue? <laughs> Uh, well, I lead my party in Wales, so I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a very flippant uh, answer. Flippant question. <laughs> and it's not a surprise at all that you have sidestepped the issue, because you sidestep issues every week here. This is a question about the NHS, about our schools and about our communities yeah, yeah, yeah. suffering from decades of underinvestment. If the then Labour Chief Secretary to the Treasury knew that Wales was being short-changed almost a decade ago, why did your party choose to do nothing about it? I, I am not here to explain the actions and comments of others, uh, and uh, it's a matter for them to, uh, to explain what I do know 
is that we have been the party pushing half of the funding floor. And my view is that Barnet is no longer relevant uh, and uh, it's about time that Wales got its uh, share of funding and that uh, Scotland wasn't seen as uh, untouchable as far as funding is concerned. Uh, would, she, would she join me in saying that Scotland should be funded according to need and that Barnet therefore needs to go? First Minister, I am here to speak on behalf of Wales. Order, order. And for you to distance yourself from a, a le Labour leadership contender is quite staggering. Yeah. First Minister, your party introduced the funding formula that disadvantaged Wales from the very outset. You refused to address the matter when your party formed the UK government in 1997, and your party said nothing when it was elected to lead the first devolved government. You've sat on the Holton report, and you refused to take responsibility for raising just some of the money that you spend. You refuse to support parity of funding for Wales with Scotland. Scotland. First Minister, what is it about Wales that makes your party want to single us out for disadvantage? Again, the obsession with Scotland. Does she not listen to uh, Dallas Thomas? Dallas Thomas on her own benches. She doesn't like to be criticised, does she? There's a streak of intolerance there. Does she not listen to Dallas Thomas on her own benches? who said last week that the obsession with Scotland was costing her party. Why doesn't she just for once make the point about standing up for Wales as we do on these benches yeah. rather than talking about Scotland on and on and on and on. It shows that we on these benches are the true party of Wales. Thank you. We now move to leader of Welsh Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, your government has set a target to reduce carbon emissions by 40% by 2020. Uh, between 2012 and 2013, the last time figures were available, greenhouse gas emissions in both England and Scotland fell by some 4%. Could you explain why in Wales we saw an increase of 10% over the same time scale? Yeah, it's to do with um, industry and it's to do with, the, uh, with increases in production, particularly in uh, industries such as Tata Steel. Uh, which of course are major contributors to uh, carbon emissions but without which of course we'd end up with uh, many thousands of jobs fewer uh, in Wales so in some way it's as a result of increased economic activity but nevertheless uh, it's true to say that inevitably has an effect on carbon emissions. Uh, First Minister I can't help but think that that's a bit of an excuse. Uh, over a quarter that's of an coal burnt in Europe is burnt by Germany and they are significant producers of both steel and iron. In fact, the biggest producers of steel in the EU, the seventh produ uh, biggest producer of steel in the entire uh, world. Yet since 1990, Germany have decreased their greenhouse gas emissions by 27% while still producing both steel and iron, compared to just a drop of 12% in Wales. In Scotland, electricity generation from coal increased in 2012 and generation generation from gas fell, yet Scotland have managed to reduce their emissions too. Does your government remain committed to delivering on the 2020 target? The well-being of future generations bill, uh, and that explains our position as a government. Uh, we have environmental legislation and uh, there are uh, challenging targets uh, that have been considered as part of that uh, legislation. Now, it's correct to say that we do have, uh, I would expect disproportionately, um, high energy intensive industries that employ many, many thousands of people. Uh, and uh, <laughs> one way of cutting our carbon emissions at a stroke would be to close those facilities down. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that people have those jobs uh, and it means that trade-offs have to be made. That doesn't mean, of course, you ignore the situation. I know that Tata, for example, have been exceptionally proactive in reducing their carbon footprint and reducing their energy use. First Minister, Germany can produce more steel than anyone else in the EU and still bring its carbon emissions down. And perhaps, Presiding Officer, the First Minister misheard me. Is the First Minister committed to delivering his 2020 target? Because he didn't actually say that he was. Now, one way to actually make the sea change that you need to make in dropping carbon emissions is actually to ensure that we are open for business and can do business in small-scale, community-owned renewable projects, just like Germany, actually, where community-owned renewables account for almost half of its electricity generation. Yet companies 
like Dulles here in Wales, say it's harder to do business in Wales than anywhere else in the UK. Will your government look at international lessons we can learn where community-owned renewable and renewables account for such large parts of generation to ensure that you can indeed, if you're still committed to it, reach your 2020 target? Yes, we're committed to the target. Uh, and yes, we want to see more uh, community regeneration projects, and that's why, of course, any of all was put in place. Uh, but I have to say that the chances of seeing an increase in renewable energy are almost zero, given the UK government's decision uh, recently to withdraw all subsidies from onshore wind, to withdraw all subsidies from photovoltaic cells. I don't know whether they bought a lot of hamsters to run on wheels in order to power electrical generation over the course of the next uh, 10 years, but it does show the uh, vacuity of uh, UK energy policy under the current UK government. And now have the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew Archie Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding yeah. Officer. Uh, First Minister, what is your understanding of the current state of play around the basic payment scheme? Uh, we are looking to see which of the options we should look at, whether there should be a flat rate or whether there should be an area rate. This is a huge issue of concern for rural Wales, and in particular many thousands of farmers, the length and breadth of Wales. Uh, it is because your government was taken to court back in December and caved in at the steps of the court that obviously the industry has so much uncertainty about the future payment rates uh, which are still to be announced from your government. Can you tell us when the Welsh Government will be bringing forward the announcement that the industry can at least have some certainty? They might disagree with the model that you'll bring forward, but they do need to be working in an area of certainty. That is ongoing at the moment. As I said to the member, we're looking at uh, at least two models as to how the, uh, the system will work. I am confident uh, that we will have a system in place in order to pay farmers in good time, as you always have done in the past. So I deduce from that that you have no idea when you're going to make this announcement. I mean, obviously, there's been speculation... There has been speculation that you are going to make that statement at the Royal Welsh Show, but whichever way the statement is made and confirmation is brought forward, do you believe that there will be a significant impact on the payment window, which starts December the 1st, or do you believe that the Welsh Government will be able to make the full payment to businesses come December the 1st that are so important for the survival of those businesses, the length and breadth of rural Wales? Well, I mean, members in the chamber here, um, uh, all parties said declare you're interested, you didn't do that. Uh, but from uh, our point of view, we are confident of the fact that uh, he doesn't have to worry about being paid, I'm sure, are confident of the fact that uh, payment will be made on time and uh, as uh, we have always planned in the future. We've been in this position before uh, where uh, it has been a challenge to put in place a new payment system, but that has been done. There will be an announcement in the, in the next, uh, in a very short space of time as to how the uh, system will work. And I have no doubt that farmers need not fear that payments will be made on time, as we in Wales have always done in the past. Can I raise a point of order, Presiding Officer? Point of order, I'd be grateful. I take it now, it's usually taken later. That's why I've stood up, because the First Minister believes that I've asked a question uh, because I have a personal interest in it. It was a general question that affects the interests of agriculture generally. Order, order. Of agriculture generally. The member's in declaration of interest clearly shows that I am a farmer. Uh, I have an interest, obviously, in the scheme. Uh, there is no hiding of that interest. Order. There is no interest, there's no undeclared interest, and I appreciate that from the Labour benches, obviously they've tried to use the press to, before, sorry, to besmirch just, just politicians in this chamber, point but I don't order. believe it's appropriate when I'm questioning the First Minister for him to class dispersions that I'm motivated out of personal gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, 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 that but wasn't a point If the Leader of, of the Opposition uh, has made a declaration, he should tell people how much money he gets. That's I'm sorry. That's, well, I'm, that's I out of order. I don't intend to pursue this. What Andrew Archie Davis said wasn't a point of order, point of information, but I don't wish to continue that, continue that debate. We now move on to question three, which is Rina Piawe. Uh, 
bod y jeti presennol, jeti diwydiannol, wrth gwrs, uh, yn anaddas ar gyfer llongor maint yna yn yr tywydd uh, fel ag yr oedd i. Ond dwi'n siŵr y byddai uh, yr prif yn ei dod yn cytuno efo i wynedog economi na allwn i adael uh, diwydiant mor bwysig a hyn i siawns. Rwy'n man ar ran o borthlad Caer Gyby, allai gael i ddatblygu, uh, rhan o'r ceu felly, allai gael i ddatblygu yn, uh, yn ddoc pwrpasol parhaol ar gyfer uh, llonga crwys o'r math yma. A all y prif yn ei dod roi ymrwymiad i gefnogi uh, ag i roi cymorth unrhyw waith dichonoldeb i ystyried y posibilrwydd o'r o math yna ddatblygiad, a rhoi cefnogaeth ymhabynnau ffordd y gall y llywodraeth i roi i sicrhau bod uh, y math yna o ddatblygiad yn gallu digwydd. <coughs> Well, all yeah. the problem in really weight. Uh, we indeed have a problem really Carly that tracing lean artronessa with the song in a, a celebrity uh, silhouette and dod i gar gabi mish oust on an er tamor here. Um, in busu of course i that blagir uh, portla that when se kahai bod moi o longai and gasli do moon ir portla di hinan. But we'll see in Ganara uh, here at Tebro si i William Powell. Uh, ni yn ystyried uh, beth dylai strategaeth i fod i'r uh, porthladdoedd yng Nghymru sydd yn Cymryd, llonge fel hyn, a ni'n uh, deall wrth gwrs bod Caer Gabia hefyd Aber Gwain uh, gyda'r crfa uh, ynglyn a uh, beth sy'n goffo wneud i ddarblygu'r porthladdoedd yn y uh, pen draw. O'n i gyd mwyn gweld Caer Gabia yn tyfu wrth gwrs fel lle sydd dim ond yn Cymryd uh, uh, ferris mewn o'r ywerddon, ond hefyd yn yr ole sydd yn dod â twristiaid mewn i Gymru. Janet Howarth, Presiding Officer. First Minister, in September last year, the Deputy Minister for Sport, Culture and Tourism stated that the first American cruise ships would start to dock at the newly improved Land at No Pier from 2015. With ports in the south and west of Wales having already welcomed their first cruise ships of the year, can I ask the First Minister for an update on when Land at No will be fully open for business? I think it's important that we don't just raise expectations uh, without looking at the full practical implications. Um, is, it, is it possible for cruise ships to dock at the Victoria and Land at No Pier, or for te passenger tenders to dock at old Victorian wooden jetties? Thank you, First Minister. Well, it is the case, of course, that uh, uh, at one time there was a regular summer passenger uh, service to the Isle of Man, uh, left from the, uh, the pier in Llandidno, I remember that very well, uh, but not for some years. But nevertheless, the, uh, the work that uh, is needed to identify whether Llandidno would be able to take uh, cruise ships or indeed other forms of uh, visitor ships in the future is still ongoing. Eleni Parrott. Uh, Josh Lowe is First Minister. When a big cruise liner um, goes into port, obviously it makes a huge impact on that one day in that one location. Um, but if we want a more sustainable approach to attracting um, cruise income for Wales, then something like the Hurtigruten, which operates in Norway, which stops point to point in many, many places along the coast and stays within um, our own local economy, um, might actually be um, a more sustainable option for our smaller tourism businesses. And I'm wondering what uh, discussions you've had about developing those shorter um, and smaller uh, cruise operations? Well, these are, are things that have been considered as part of the long-term strategy of uh, cruise, to attract cruise business into Wales. Of course, we want to make sure that we attract uh, ships of different sizes. The emphasis has been on making sure our facilities can cope with the bigger ships in the future. That doesn't mean, of course, that uh, we, we ignore uh, the potential that is there with the smaller cruise ships as they sail around Wales. Uh, question four is Joyce Watson. Uh, Diolch Llawydd, will the First Minister make a statement on access to primary care in Mid and West Wales? Yes, health boards, including those in uh, the Mid and West, are implementing local plans to improve access to the right care at the right time closer to home. Uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, last week, Hilda announced the recruitment of two, two new consultants to Withybush, and that is extremely welcome. At the same time, the Health Minister gave the go-ahead for the £20 million Cardigan Health Centre, and that again is fantastic news for that region. Do you agree with me, uh, First Minister, that these developments demonstrate a confidence in the future, and what impact do you think that this could have in terms of attracting new primary care professionals to that area? Uh, hugely important. I know the uh, Mid Wales Healthcare Collective uh, and the work that's, that's gone on around that has been hugely important in terms of working with practitioners to develop a healthcare system for the rural west. We see the investment that's been made into, uh, into Whitney Bush. And we've seen also 
consultants in Worthy Bush providing solutions themselves to particular issues, particularly with regard to A&E. Mm -hmm. And of course, the announcement about Cardian will provide a fantastic uh, health centre, including a minor injuries unit uh, and other services for the local community. Angela Burns. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Unfortunately, none of the consultants recruited were uh, consultant urologists. And this is an area that has been pushed out to GP surgeries. Um, this is a time in people's lives when they are desperately needing to see someone quite quickly. They've often got a problem with their, with their, um, uh, um, sorry, I've forgotten the word for it, um, the, the, the equipment that is attached to them. Um, the problem is that a lot of GP surgeries do not have the consultant nurse or doctor who is able to put such devices to people and so we've got a lot of people within the uh, Haldar Trust who are struggling to get urology services either at a community uh, level or at a hospital level and I wanted First Minister what you can do to urge Haldar to look at rectifying this situation because um, it affects an awful lot of people especially uh, gentlemen with prostate cancer problems. I, I will write to the member on that. Uh, more generally of course uh, we would want to see GP services, uh, surgeries providing services like that that don't have to be provided in hospitals, that much is true. The finance has to be arranged for that, we understand that. Uh, I'm unaware of a particular issue with regard to neurology, but I will write to the member with uh, the findings of uh, my investigations. Simon Thomas. Uh, uh, in Opradevon, Muya Amlug, my pobl and door, that's I, Gida Gosanaitha, Canwad, Yechid, you, Amsa Avos, Igal Penodiad. Uh, pwyntiad yn hytrach dy gyda'r uh, ymeddig taili. Ac uh, un o'r fys yma am hynny wrth gwrs i'w bod na uh, diffig yn aml iawn yn wedig yn, yn y cnobath o gorllewyn o practice sydd ar nifer o meddygon taili yn, yn, yn fan hon y fe. Um, pa ses ydych chi'n neud fel llywodraeth o'r angen i fai o'r cleifyn yma i weld meddyg taili neu sut allwn nhw i fod yn honest cael eu gweld gan am y fewwr nyrsio uwch, the advanced nurse practitioners, yn y wedi gwaith sydd yn gallu fod prescription yn y gystal. Achos mae'n ymddangos i fi bod modd cyflwyno dull yma er mwyn lleddfu ar y oed i sydd yn y meddygon taelio. Ia, mi'n cyfnod pwynt teg, yn ni wedi gofyn i fod wrth gwrs i ddewis yn ddoeth, choose well yn Saesneg, a lle cyntaf fynd i'w fferyllydd. Uh, Ofan na, wrth gwrs, nyrs tu fewn um, uh, i bractis uh, meddig tili, a wedi ni, wrth gwrs, mae'n lan fo na i, I feddig. Uh, mae nyrs ysgyrru ni'n llawer, wrth gwrs, uh, uh, I, I helpu bobl, sy'n mesio felly gweld uh, meddig uh, tili. Uh, a fi'n gwybod na enghraifft ar, ar draws Cymru, lle mae nyrs ysgyrru ni'n lle gyda um, sawl uh, meddygfa, uh, lle mae bod yn gallu mynd i weld nyrs, heb cael y pwyntiau, jyst mae mewn, a wrth gwrs, mae nyrs gallu delio dy ran fwyaf o'r problemau sydd dyr uh, sydd dyfod bod pam yn mynd i weld yn nyrs, so byddwn ni'n anog wrth gwrs y hybu uh, ac yn anog uh, meddygfeydd i, I ystyried y system fel yna o wytho. Er mwyn wrth gwrs i ddim ni pwys o'r bant o'r meddygon tili, bod nhw'n delio gyda'r achos yn dim rhaid i'n ei weld, uh, ac wrth gwrs i'n neud yn rhwyddach i'r cachwyd. Kirsty Williams. Uh, First Minister, earlier this year, your government renegotiated the GMS contract to create a sustainability uh, fund to protect access to primary care in deprived and rural areas. It was the anticipation that that fund would be available by the end of June, which is uh, today, and that fund is going to be absolutely crucial in securing the ongoing provision of a GP service at Llanwrtid Wells. Could you confirm that, that fund, uh, applications to that fund will now be able to be made by general practitioners who wish to access it? I'm not aware of there being any uh, difficulty in terms of that fund. It's there uh, for a reason, and the members outlined that reason. I'm familiar with the uh, situation in, uh, in Llanwrtid. Uh, but it is important, of course, that when the fund is made available, that the, the applications are made in order to ensure that uh, rural uh, family medical services can be preserved and enhanced. Question five, Mark Isherwood. How does the Welsh Government ensure that its child poverty programmes engage fully with parents? Well, family engagement is at the heart of Flying Start, families first and communities first, because supporting both parents to achieve better employment, health and education outcomes uh, is a central uh, part of tackling poverty. Well, successive reports have recognised the importance for the welfare and development of their children of both parents remaining closely involved in the lives of their children following separation, yet fathers frequently feel excluded from services. What uh, data, therefore, does the Welsh Government uh, compile and hold on uh, the levels of engagement 
with fathers by Welsh <coughs> Government programmes including uh, Flying Start, Families First and Communities First or otherwise how does it monitor uh, this important matter? So it's difficult to actually monitor levels of engagement from fathers but I can say to the uh, member that we do expect local authorities to actively promote services to fathers and support their engagement. Uh, many services are providing dedicated support specifically tailored to the particular needs of fathers, including providing fathers groups and employing dedicated dads workers, as they're called. Uh, training has also been provided for uh, staff to ensure that they are better able to uh, engage with fathers and to build relationships with them. John Griffiths. First Minister, would you agree with me that community-focused schools are very important in terms of engaging with parents and communities and far too many of our schools are still closed at weekends, um, weekday evenings and indeed school holidays and it would be very beneficial for parents and communities in Wales if we were to have a more consistent accessibility and availability of our schools and I wonder if you would commit to exploring possible mechanisms to achieve that greater consistency. Well, we would encourage, of course, uh, schools to be made available as far as possible uh, to the community. The difficulty is sometimes the design of the school, the older schools, are, are not designed uh, to be secure uh, for use after school hours. Newer schools are. Uh, we would expect uh, any new built school to be able to be uh, accessible to the community beyond school hours. And that needs to be reflected in the design of the school itself. And I've seen many examples across Wales where a certain section of the school can be kept open beyond school hours, the rest of the school can be kept secure, and of course the facilities of the school and indeed outside the school and the school grounds can be made available. So yes, in the future all schools uh, will be in that position, but there can be some difficulties with some of the older schools that weren't designed uh, to be open after hours. Peter Black. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, last week in questions you gave a very strong or made a very strong preference in relation to flying start in Crocero and Clincorog that that service should be continued within the communities where it, where it had started and those communities should not have to travel a great distance to access that service. And later in that meeting, the uh, Communities Minister also said that, she, that it should continue in September and has written to members to that effect. Um, I've now had a letter which David Rees has received from the Chief Executive of the East Potomac Council, which he has shared with campaigners, in which the Chief Executive effectively says that the alternative provision will be available elsewhere in the Upper Val Avon Valley, and he doesn't feel that there is any obligation on the Council to continue that provision within the existing communities of Crocero and Kincorog, effectively directly contrary to the assurances which we've had in this chamber. Is it possible, First Minister, that the that ministers here could liaise with Nice Potalbert Council to ensure that from September this year, Crocero and Clincorog do have a continuation of that flying start service in their own communities? Well, I haven't seen the letter, but I will ask the minister to uh, uh, look at the issue um, on behalf of yourself and, of course, the member uh, for uh, Aberavon uh, to see what the uh, current situation is. Lynn Eagle. First Minister, it is strange to hear the Welsh Conservatives talking about child poverty when we know that George Osborne is planning a £5 billion tax credit bombshell for his emergency budget next week, despite their pre-election promises. Of course, if the briefing from the Treasury is to be believed, their plans were slash incomes by two, for 2.7 million families, with many families set to lose £1,700 a year. Would you agree with me that if the Welsh Conservatives are serious about child poverty, they should focus their efforts on getting their UK government to change their spending plans. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we used to say to people, if you get a job, your income will increase. That's just no longer the case. Uh, we are seeing more and more examples of in-work poverty. And the proposals that have been put forward would make that worse. I think it can be summed up in this way. The Prime Minister says uh, he wants to uh, remove uh, benefits and tax credits for those in work. Uh, he will then try to beg employers to pay more, and if they don't, tough luck. Yeah. That's basically what the Prime Minister is at the moment. It's unfair, unjust, and above all else, naive. Question six, Jonathan Saunders. Yeah. 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 Officer, First Minister, will the First Minister make a statement on child and adolescent mental health services in North Wales? Yes, we've recently announced an additional £7.6 million a year to support work underway to improve calms across Wales, and that represents an 18% increase in current resources. Thank you. You will be aware of the immense concern as regards access to services, in particular for those suffering from eating disorders. And I currently have a constituent 
who is under specialist treatment now in Staffordshire. And it does beg the question why there is no eating disorder unit in Wales. Now, I'm given to understand that the North Wales Adolescent Centre in Abergelly has got six beds long-term empty, has the kite team outreach there, is a secure and well-supported environment, has a school facility, gymnastics provision, and all the infrastructure therein for an eating disorders unit. As this is a specialist facility that's been bought and paid for within the past uh, five years, I'm going to be looking into this more closely, but yeah, yeah. would you work with me um, to look at this as a possibility um, and a treatment centre for those with eating disorders because this really is on the rise? Good question. Well, it depends, of course, on uh, the availability of specialists. It depends on the, the numbers of people going through a facility because inevitably with, with, uh, with unusual conditions and thankfully eating disorders are still unusual, although I take the point that she makes about them being on the increase. Uh, it's important then that people with eating disorders are treated in specialist centres with specialists who see that condition day in, day out, week in, week out. Uh, I would not want to see uh, a, a facility open where that expertise was, was lost to, uh, to the patient. Uh, so we want to see the best uh, services available to the people of Wales. If that means at the moment that the best services are available in, in England, we don't want to create a, a wall between Wales and England in terms of um, uh, that service being available to people living in Wales. Alan Fred Jones. Well, mae'r ganolfan na bergele ac enw da iawn iddi, ond mae hi'n anodd iawn cymunediad iddi ac mae yna bobl ifanc yn yn etholaeth i ac yna gorllewi yn sydd yn amal iawn yn gofod aros misoedd pan maen nhw ar i mwyaf bregus cyn cael help gan arbenigwyr. Beth allwch chi'n llywodraeth chi yn wneud i sicrhau bod pobl ifanc sydd mewn angen fel hyn yn cael mynediad i'r gwasanaethau hanfodol hyn ar yr adeg gywir? Well, we've seen, of course, Amar Arian Chonegos, who really can't be uh, that can, uh, but they're already uh, helping Bobol. In the morning, in a trinieth on uh, Sikirhai, uh, Bobol, them and Dorinrano system, uh, Kaviander, uh, Trosedo, and of course, he uh, helping Bobol in Gael trinieth Tivas, uh, ir, um, I, I Sivadliad er a Spetti, uh, and Gael trinieth of Inagaminer. Alec Roberts. Diolch llywydd. Um, Prif wyn i dog, mae nifer y pobl i fi'n sydd yn aros dros pedair wythnos ar ddeg wedi cynyddu yn ystod y ddwy flynyddol yma yn y gogledd o ugen y misebryll 2013 i 385 erbyn misebryll eleni. Mae gan y bwrdd iechyd yn y gogledd hanes o beidio defnyddio arian sydd wedi cael ei glisnodi gan Lywodraeth Cymru os ydych chi'n edrych ar uh, cofnodion y pwyllgor um, cyfrifon cyhoeddus er enghraifft. Sut felly fe chi yn sicrhau bod yr arian ma'n cael ei ddefnyddio yn ôl y pwrpas dy chi wedi dynodi, a fydd na angen i'r bwrdd iechyd yn y gogledd cael cynllun gweithredu penodol fydd yn bosib i bob un ohonyn ni'n monitro? Mae'r arian yn cael ei benodi at cams, a mae'r arian yn cael ei ddefnyddio er mwyn wrth gwrs i sicrhau bod gwasanaethau o dan cams yn cynyddu yn y pen draw, a fydd pob bwrdd iechyd yn gofod dongos bod yr arian wedi cael ei ala ar hwnna. Question seven, Russell George. Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the future of technical advice note eight? Tani provides a robust framework for the planning of renewable energy in Wales. Uh, First Minister, you will be aware of the thousands of my constituents who uh, descended on the National Assembly for Wales in 2011, calling on your government to scrap or review uh, Tan 8. Now, as Tan 8 nearly entirely focuses on onshore wind, uh, it does seem to me now that it is largely irrelevant following the UK government's announcement to end uh, subsidy for onshore wind. Uh, will you be bringing forward a, a new TAN uh, that will focus on support for a much wider mix of renewable energy? Well, TAN of course, has, has nothing to do uh, with the uh, Mid Wales Conjoined Inquiry. It's all a matter no, for the, for the UK that. government. Nothing whatsoever to do with TAN at all. Nothing. And yes, protesters came here, but they were protesting, I suggest, in the wrong place, because it was the uh, national planning statement, uh, the English national planning statement that was being used to, uh, to deal with this. Well, I, I have absolutely no idea what forms of renewable energy the UK government is trying to promote, if I'm honest. Onshore wind is gone, photovoltaic cells have gone, offshore wind is hugely expensive. Uh, we have the tidal lagoon, but there's, there's no sign of a strike price on that. I, I, I am mystified as to where exactly energy policy is going. Because at the moment, it's simply a question of closing off avenues in terms of energy generation without opening up new ones.
and uh, it, I, I, I wait to see what the UK government has in terms of its plans to see how energy will be uh, generated in the future. Because at the moment, not just myself, but the energy companies themselves are concerned and they're beginning to worry about whether the UK is actually a wise place to invest. Clear, Griffith. Diolch llywydd, mi fydda cynllun helaethach a thargedau'r enghraifft yn help o sabwynt y llywodraeth chi hefyd, uh, Brif Wynidog. Ond uh, gai ofyn i chi gan bod y bil cynllunio nawr yn golygu, byddwn ni uh, y mang Nghymru yn cael framwerth datblygu cenedlaethol. Ydy hynny yn golygu bod dyddiau tan wyth wedi rhifo? Mae'n pob tan wrth gwrs yn cael ei adolygu nawr gan y man, ond dy sy'n pwynt cael targedau heb yr arian, a dyw'r arian amdani. Uh, ni'n gwybod bod y rocs yn mynd, dy sy'n modd i ni yng Nghymru i dynnu uh, uh, ffyrdd o greu yn ei mewn i Gymru. So, does in point gael targedau, heb bod y tools gyda chi ar yn sicrhau bod y targedau yn gallu cael eu cyrraedd. Ni'n gwybod, of course, beth efallai ni moyn gweld y datgynoli o ragor y bwerau i'r cynulliad i bobl Cymru, ni moyn gweld y datgynoli o'r system o subsidies, fel sydd digwydd yn yr Alban, a mae'n rheswm pa mae'r Alban, a fi mewn am yr Alban nawr, mi'n cyfadau yna, a rheswm pa mae'r Alban, wedi wneud mor dda, yw achos y ffaith bod yr Alban yn rheoli'r arian sydd ar gael i'r Cymru a hyn. Uh, ni wedi dioddau o achos y ffaith, bod ni'n dod uh, o dan system Lloegr a Chymru, a dwi'n dim clemd y neb beth nawr yw polisi Llywodraeth y Dynas Unedig tuag at yni hyd yn ôl y cwmnie i hunain. Cwestiwn 8, Keith Davies. Diolch uh, ywyd. A wnaeth y prif yn unig uh, dros olwg yr camau mae Llywodraeth Cymru yn ei Cymryd i amddiffyn a chefnogi uh, treftadaeth leol. Mae trotadau thle leol yn rhoi cymeriad unigryw i'n cymunedau antrefi, felly mae'n hairianol yn bod yn gwerthfyrogi a'i gwarchod, a ni'n cyflwyno nifer o fesyrau a fydd yn helpu i'r nabod a rheoli treftadaeth o ddiddordeb lleol. Mae adeiladau hanesyddol fel tu llanelli yn gallu drwy feddwl creadigol a chefnogaeth yr annwl a'n cael eu dros glwyddo i fod yn dresor cenedlaethol. Yr wythoth diwethaf, fe wnaeth y gwynido gwasanaethau cyhoeddus gyhoeddi datganiad pwysig ar reoliadau gwerthiant cu eich chwarae. O dan bwysau cyllidol ar Llywodraeth Leol nawr, mae gwario a sedau fel plasti par cywyd yn feddoleth wedi bod dan sylw aelod cabinet hamdden cyngor sydd gar. Ydych chi'n cytuno rhyfi bod rhaid cael prawf diddordeb cyhoedd ac ymgoriad llawn cyn bod unrhyw benderfyniad yn cael ei wneud i werthu'r lle. Well, tri ffwyth, yn gyntaf yn rhywbeth i'r cyngor, yn ail, mae beth mae'r aelod wedi gweud yn synhwyrol iawn, a fy marni, a ni'n ei sylwadau fe, byddwn ni ddim yn anghetuno gyda nhw. Ond yn dyrydd, wrth gwrs, fe allwch hwn i ddod yn rhywbeth sydd yn dod tyfu yn y system cynllunio, felly mae gwneud o gynffyrdd i gweud rhagor ar hwn ar hyn o bryd. Ond fel wedi si, mae'r eilio wedi wneud i sylwadau, mae'n sylwadau cryf, a byddwn ni'n gobeithio bod cyngor sy'r gar yn gwrando yn ôl. Susan Davis. Llywydd. First Minister, following oral and written questions from me, your previous Heritage Minister gave me certain reassurances about Neath Abbey in my region, which of course comes under Cadw control. Only this month, local, uh, local members of the community have had to lobby the local council in order to provide a bin big enough to keep the site tidy uh, so that visitors don't see it looking a mess. Um, Neath Abbey, I think, should be at the forefront of CADU's National Maintenance and Development Programme, the forefront of destination management plans and the forefront of the faith heritage plans. What evidence can you give me that the Welsh Government sees it the same way? Well, I know that the Minister is, is in regular contact with Gwanda Thomas as the member for, uh, for Neath, and I know that Neath Abbey is a, a hugely important asset, uh, not just for the uh, town of Neath and the surrounding uh, villages, but for the wider area. It represents a, a hugely important part of our past uh, in Wales, uh, and CAD both ourselves as a government and indeed CADU uh, are particularly, uh, find it particularly important to make sure that its uh, heritage is maintained for the future. Beth and Jenkins. Um, Prif yn ei dog, mae wedi dod i'r gol o groethnos yma, um, petai um, tonel y rhonfa yn ail agor, um, mae, well, os nad y tonel mwyaf hir yr hira um, am chwech mis o'r flwyddyn o herydd, mae yna un yn talaith Washington sydd ar gai am hanner y flwyddyn. Um, a dych chi'n gallu um, gwneud mwy fel llywodraeth, dwi'n gwybod bod y, y, y gwynidog yr economi yn edrych ar um, y sefyllfa ar hyn o bryd, er mwyn hybu er daloedd eraill i um, adfer um, tonelu o'r fath, er mwyn sicrhau bod tonelu ar hyd uh, y cymoedd de Cymru yn gallu cael eu hadfer a'i gofio fel rhan cynhenid o trydadaeth penodol hynny. 
Uh, we go bore uh, uh, we di cathedo a studieth in lina to no hinan senior dadros ben of course uh, ag uh, talitan get your bobo say also with the uh, a studied hon on the uh, manani well now of course with the studieth in dangos and lina be seen possible in the bottle thank you first minister we now move to item 2 which is